Good day, uh, everyone. And I noticed that there are 44 participants at the moment to this uh, National Science Week plenary. That is indeed a, an impressive number of delegates that or participants that have joined this uh, session. I see many familiar names and will connect with you as well. It's, it's great. Uh, it's a great occasion. So in terms of this session, so the Human Sciences Research Council, the Technology Innovation Agency, and the universities of Benda and South Africa collaborated to organize one of the strands of activities towards the National Science Week 2021. As you well know, the National Science Week began in 2000 and has been up to now largely an in-person contact session. So this 21 years later, I guess they still will celebrate 21 years uh, because it's actually 20 years of any stuff. C circumstances dictated <clears throat> this new modality of National Science Week. And of course, the modality brings with it new opportunities as well as challenges. And I think uh, up front uh, to all participants, uh, both the panelists and those that are uh, have joined in um, just, or well, this is the first time we're doing it this way. Of course, we've done webinars, but this is a new uh, modality for National Science Week. I'm Vijay Reddy uh, from the Human Sciences Research Council, and I'm the chair or moderator of this opening plenary. <clears throat> the theme that the collaborating partners, HSRC, Universities, the vendors of South Africa, and TIA, uh, put forward for their theme of uh, for their, their work, national systems of innovation stakeholders role in the white paper on science, technology and innovation. And this plenary is entitled the significance of the National Science Week. Again, the National Science Week, uh, the key objective is to celebrate and communicate science and science based activities to all parts of the country and all publics. Now, in order to respond to this theme of the stakeholders' role in achieving the objectives for NSI stakeholders, um, uh, are part of the panel, and one person from, from the Department of Science and Innovation, the parent body to which all the entities and universities report to. Each of the panelists will speak about the significance of the NSW, and their role for about 12 minutes. And unfortunately, they will have to, I, I can't in, engage during your presentation. I'll, I will if you get far over for 12 minutes, but please moderate your uh, presentation for 12 minutes. And then we, we will respond to some of the questions uh, in the, uh, that, that are in the chat. And, Please note your questions or comments, and I'll try to find some synopsis of it to ask the panelists what you would like to know. Now, your program has the names of speakers. One speaker has changed. Uh, Patrick Crappy from uh, TIA will not be presenting. Rather, in his place, uh, Tandokazi Nkuma Moyo will be the presenter uh, um, representing TIA. And, uh, these are all senior leaders in the field and in the institution and accomplished people. If I took time to read their CVs, that would be the whole presentation. So excuse me, both the panelists and the participants, I will only give one line about you and your institution. And of course, anybody is free to, uh, to, to, to read up uh, uh, about them. Now, the first, the first speaker that we'll present is Dr. Bernard Intambeleni, who is the Vice Chancellor and Principal of the University of Venda. He has, uh, he joined the University of Venda in 2019 and comes with vast experience in the higher education sector relating to teaching, management, research management, and administration. Now, of course, the University of Venda is described as a comprehensive rural-based institution located in Toyando in Limpopo province. About 20 years ago, I did visit the University of Venda, so I have an idea where it is. And he will be the first speaker to respond to the question about 
as a stakeholder and, and, and the role of the university in the national system of innovation promoting the National Science Week and his views about its significance. Uh, Dr. Intambeleni. Thank you, Program Director, and also to my fellow members of the panel. Uh, Program Director, I've not prepared a PowerPoint presentation, but I do have some uh, few you know, points that I've judged for myself that I'd like to talk to. I hope I will be audible enough for me to make, you know, some impact in what I'm gonna say beside using the PowerPoint. I'm gonna chair and deputy program director to briefly speak at this virtual annual celebration of Science and Technology National Science Week. As investor vendor, we are grateful to collaborate in co-hosting this year web-based National Science Week in partnership with the Human Science Research Council, the Technology Innovation Agency, and also the University of South Africa. As already established in the literature, science and technology and engineering have a major impact on our societies. And this impact is growing at much faster pace. Science has drastically changed the way we live. It has also changed our means and mode of communication. It has changed and changing the way we work, our methods of transport, uh, transportation, and indeed, even the length and the quality of life itself. So science has got that profound impact on all of us. To secure our livelihoods, science must respond to social needs that are faced by citizens. And this is something that I'll come back to. And that the public understanding of science and technology by citizen through the popularization of science is essential in equipping citizens to make informed choices, personal choices as it were. It has also been long established that science and innovation is a key driver for economic growth. So there's a body of literature that speaks to that point of view that says, you know, science and innovation is a key driver for economic uh, growth. And that also research and innovation improve productivity and create jobs, that is well known. At the same time, research and innovation help make people's lives better by improving their healthcare, their transport, the digital services, and also countless new products and services. The organization of the, and the hosting of the National Science Week is of significant importance in helping us to understand and to build a knowledge societies and communities by popularizing science, engineering, and technology disciplines. So this is a quite very novel and very important aspect of ensuring that you know, it begin to really popularize these disciplines that are quite very key for the development of our societies and our communities. The National Science Week also contributes to, in our view, to the development of knowledge society. And these are the role that also universities are called to play in developing what you call the knowledge societies and also help to raise the awareness about science, technology, engineering, and maths in particular to appeal to the learners so that they can choose these kind of disciplines for their career options. More importantly in our view, the National Science Week should bring awareness of all South Africans about the role that is played by science and technology in our daily lives. And also help to demystify the myths and ignorance surrounding the technological developments and advancement that are meant to advance our societies. Like we have seen the destruction of the, of the fifth generation mobile networks alleged to be the cause and transmitter of the virus 
that causes a severe acute respiratory syndrome. So those are the kind of things that in our view, that you know, this uh, hosting of this science national week, so national science week should be able to really bring to the fore in order to make sure that you know, we really begin to teach and demystify this myth where people believe that you know, instead of the advancement that we see through science, they see destruction in the way that you know, I'm talking about. So there's much more in our view in terms of ensuring that you know, this uh, hosting of the National Science Week begin also to popularize this notion of understanding the role of science in how it should to advance our daily lives. Also, the National Science Week, in our view, has a key role to play in creating awareness to our societies and communities about the great South African achievements. So there's quite a lot that we do know that you know, as a continent, as a country, we have achieved. But legally split known by most of our people in terms of those contributions that our scientists have really come up with. You know. So it's our view also that you know, as we celebrate this National Science Week, we're also able to bring an awareness to our societies and communities about the great South Africans achievements that we've seen so far and the discoveries that have contributed in changing the world that we live in, which in our view, they are quite many and they have to be really make sure that they are being told. And last in my view, the National Science Week should also help to communicate the contribution of science, engineering and technology in solving the triple challenges that we see in the country, that of poverty, unemployment, inequality, that is so widespread in our South African society. Now that again is a kind of point that I thought I'm gonna come back to, that you know, in building this knowledge generation, knowledge society, we're gonna ensure that also, we begin also to address these triple challenges that you know, our societies are uh, going through today, that of poverty, unemployment and inequality. How do we make sure that you know, we link that, you know, the development of science, technology into solving our daily problems and make sure that you know, even the men on the streets begin to, in the street begin to understand and also able to appreciate the role that science and technology play in shaping and changing our lives. So for me, that's quite very important. If we have to really maybe underscore and able to salvage in terms of what we see with our communities as we now experience them. How do we make sure that you know, we, we communicate the contribution of science in a way that it also empowers our people. It also empowers our citizens in the space and also begin to solve the problems of inequalities that we also see in our, in our, in our country. So for me, those are the things that I believe a, a program director are the thing that you know, we must be able to do and we are much more as the investor vendor, much more being appreciative that you know, we are part of this National Science Week, as we see ourselves in our role to ensure that you know, we are able to really participate. Because we believe in how we do our work, you know, we must be able to impact our societies. Because we don't believe there's gonna be any knowledge, anything that has to happen without impacting societies, which will be much more profound to the development of our communities. You know. So with those few words, Program Director, let me thank you for giving me this brief time just to share my very few thoughts that I had. Thank you so much. Thank you, VC. Uh, much appreciated. Uh, I don't notice any questions on the chat at the moment, but perhaps I could ask you one question. And that, uh, uh, and thank you very much for articulating the importance of the National Science Week uh, and the activities, and especially in our context. Perhaps you could uh, articulate what you would see as some of the challenges that the University of Venda would face in mounting a National Science Week with the objectives that you've stated in the area of Toyando and, and perhaps with also suggesting some sort of solutions in that the National Science Week is accessible to everyone, whether in Pretoria or in uh, Toyando. Uh, perhaps uh, some guidance on, on that to, to make it more accessible to all South Africans. Thank you, Program Director. Yes, uh, uh, quite a very you know, profound and important question that you're asking. What we see as challenges. Uh, and these are things that you already were raised in another fora elsewhere in terms of how our societies 
and how unequal you know, our spaces is. Uh, as you now understand in terms of us able to deliver the curricula that you know, it has to be through this multimodal way of teaching, where we also rely much more on the technology for us to teach. Now, the challenge that we see and which I can speak of is that, you know, if you look in terms of the terrain, in this historically, what you call the, in the rural cities, that, you know, you still got some places in the country that we live in today, where you still don't have, you know, you know tele telecommunication coverage, where, you know, students will only benefit for, from learning if they are only on campus where there's a Wi-Fi network that is you know, quite accommodative for each and everybody. But the moment as they move into their spaces, into their homes, they become cut off. So that lies for me a challenge that will ensure that all of us, you know, regardless of where we are located, able to really make sure that we are able to follow that. You know. And these are things that already we have raised in the different fora, much more with this uh, mobile you know, technology networks how do we make sure that you know, we're able to really put this to ensure that you know, each and every person and everybody, wherever they're located, they're able to get coverage in. So this, I think for me, the challenge that I see, much more when you speak about our basic education, those in my view that are much more, the feeders to the university system, that you know, if they're located in the very same setup that I just defined, it's gonna be quite very difficult for most of them to really maybe follow in terms of what is happening, quite very important in this week, when we begin to celebrate the National Science Week. So for me, that's a challenge that I think we see, that you know, the terrain is quite very unequal in terms of the access to technology as it were. So Chair, I think those are for me, the things that you know, I can able to say, you know, they are impediment. However, from our side, in terms of providing some solutions, wherein we were able to, uh, you know, reach some, you know, agreements with the med mobile, you know, network or you know, operators, wherein we are able to make sure that, you know, where there are some sort of a big, you know, institutes like the churches, the, you know, uh, uh, you know, postal offices, you know, services, that we're able to really utilize that and then able to make sure that in you know, our students and groups, they are able to really access, you know, these kind of uh, mobile technologies in that spaces, you know. We've also made sure that we open our doors, not only for our students, but also those that you know, can able to learn from our spaces in terms of how we you know, provide you know, solutions to IT. So those are the things that we've done in our part, but there's still in my view, much more bigger role that needs to be done by mobile technologies and government itself in how to address the inequalities in terms of how we access these mobile technologies. You know, so for me, that's what I needed to raise as the challenges and just a solution to how some of us will begin to really address that thing. Thank you. Uh, what I took away from your uh, response, uh, the one important thing was you talked about the public, private and community partnership and that uh, you know, the university and mobile providers and churches and other kinds of community spaces. And it could be something that would be a very good lesson for many parts of South Africa. So we, we look forward to hearing more about how you proceed in, 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 in improved access given the challenges that we have. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Intimbeleni. There is a question on the chat and I'm going to ask you to, to, to respond on the chat to Demi Faye Miwa. And uh, uh, Thank you for your question, Demi, but uh, for the interest of time, we'll have the response on the chat and we'll continue to the second speaker. Our second speaker is Professor Leibniz Simbai from the, the acting CEO of the Human Sciences Research Council. Now, Prof Simbai trained as an experimental psychologist and his research has been largely in the area of uh, in the area of the social and behavioral aspects of HIV AIDS and sexually transmitted infections. I'm sorry that uh, Prof. Sambai was having a bit of a battle getting onto the uh, site, but he's here now. And just uh, the, the human sciences, again, as we sort of locate the individual in the institution that they're coming from, that the mandate of the Human Sciences Research Council is to conduct research which informs debate, advocacy, and decision-making 
by different role players. And just to, to, to repeat, Prof. Sambai, uh, the theme is the national systems innovation stakeholders role. Uh, so, so as, as the HSRC is part of the NSI, and for you to respond to the question of how the institution, uh, or what does the institution see as the significance of the National Science Week? Over to you, and you can, uh, you'll have about 12 minutes, and uh, you can add your video on, please. Uh, thanks for this opportunity uh, uh, to speak to this gathering. Uh, dear esteemed colleagues, fellow science community members, partners and communities here with us today. I would like to duly recognize the Department of Science and Innovation and the South African Agency for Science and Technology, SASTA, for ensuring that this project of national development is on course as it is one of the priority areas to be supported by the national system of innovation stakeholders, especially those who are at the center of knowledge production. Therefore, it is a great pleasure today to find ourselves celebrating and promoting science and innovation in our country. Our progressive economies do recognize uh, that science, technology, and innovation are a potential driver for job creation. Science knowledge and production should benefit the local communities and domestic markets through impactful means of collaboration. The National White Paper on Science and Technology notes that amongst other objectives, is creation of an enabling environment for innovation. Thus, it is important to foster inclusivity of grassroots, uh, grassroots innovations. Building sustainable models of supporting innovation is equally important as this will bridge the gap of transformation and inequalities, which we can achieve through partnerships of this nature. As we see the University of Venda having worked uh, with the community in implementing the biogas plant project and UNISA showcasing the high-end astronomy technology. Uh, the Human Sciences Research Council itself participates in national assessment of mathematics and science achievement. Uh, which is called Trends in International Mathematics and Science Studies, or TEAMS in short. This takes place every four years. Uh, data are collected from grades fives and nine learners, uh, which allow us to identify challenges that are schools and learners first, but are uh, also the home context that South African learners function in. And this team study is led by uh, Dr. Reddy. Of the challenges learners face are socioeconomic driven ones, such as the access to digital instruments and learning material, and the difficulty in reading to comprehend. We do need agencies such as Technology and Innovation Agency, or TIA for short, as they sub do support the mandate of investing and growing this portfolio of domestic technology and innovation products. So in highlighting some of these issues, we would like to see a strengthened effort to involve communities in science projects and growing economies that can put at their center the utilization of science skills. The COVID-19 pandemic has really given us an opportunity to appreciate the need for science literate nation and investing in uh, the science skills. 
As we all know, South Africa is one of the leading countries in innovation on the African continent. And we have to push boundaries to see South Africa producing companies and innovation products that can emerge and compete at the global scale. I would like to thank the partnering institutions uh, for making this science engagement a reality. Uh, thanks to our strategic partnerships unit led by Palesa uh, for making sure that the Human Sciences Research Council can work with UNISA, University of South Africa, I mean, Univan, and TIA. We look forward to many more engagements and sharing of knowledge production and dissemination platform. Thank you all. We see this, we see this event as key towards contributing to our national development plan. Uh, thank you, Dr. Reddy. Thank you, uh, Prof. Simbaya, to uh, um, illustrating the partnerships and some of the work of the HSRC. I see in your choice of, uh, you've chosen two studies of, of one as a more systematic study and the other one of the COVID responses. And I wonder if you could share with the audience a little more about the HSRC's nimble responses to a catastrophic event of last year and the, the way it approached gaining evidence in order to inform the public about what was going on as well as the policy makers in terms of how to intervene. Uh, thank you for, for that question, uh, Director of Programs. So uh, the HSIC um, immediately sprang into action when uh, we knew that the problem of COVID-19 was about to, to hit the nation. Uh, and luckily enough, in conjunction with the Department of Science and Innovation, uh, soon afterwards, they set in motion an initiative whereby they put in together uh, all entities that report to them, uh, including uh, the National Institute of Humanities and Social Sciences, which is part of uh, the larger Ministry of Higher Education, Science and Innovation. And essentially the task was for us to uh, look at social science aspects of COVID-19. Um, it, it's interesting that hitherto um, we've only had mostly about epidemiology, uh, uh, about what medical sciences were pre uh, presenting, but there were no uh, perspective that brought in humanities and social sciences. And essentially we quickly uh, sprung into action by starting uh, a survey series, uh, which was done virtually, uh, which was uh, targeting people to ask about their behavior and their understanding about COVID-19, as well as about things they understood uh, they needed to do in order to prevent the spread uh, of COVID-19. Uh, actually, it is important to highlight the fact that our ability to have quickly reacted uh, in, in the main also relied on the fact that the HSIC is renowned for its work in the area of HIV. So essentially the same tools were applied and by doing so we were able to provide additional information uh, to the government uh, and in particular later when we started to talk about vaccination. So we could, for example, estimate how many South Africans were prepared to be vaccinated and then also inform on interventions that could encourage those who were not willing to get vaccinated 
to, to think again about the benefits uh, of, of, of being vaccinated. I'm sure I could go on uh, because this is something I do myself. I'll, I'll stop there. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Likeness. We have a question in the chat, uh, Zaid Omar, and he says, uh, uh, thank you for raising the need for innovation. And to what extent have you reached out to the engineering sector on innovation? Uh, and I suppose, Zayed, we talk both about social innovation as well as the kind of engineering and, and other forms of uh, innovation as well. Uh, uh, anything that you would like to respond to, Prof. Sambai? Uh, thanks. Thanks again, uh, Dr. Reddy. Uh, so essentially, uh, one of the things which, uh, in fact, the Department of Science and Innovation encourages is collaboration between the hard sciences and social sciences. Uh, and, and therefore, uh, for example, with SASTA, uh, who might have telescopes looking into the heavens, we are equally able to look at the people aspect of, of the things that they deal with. So there is room for actually adding the human dimension to, to engineering innovation to be specific. And this applies to other types of innovation because in any case, uh, all innovations are meant to help uh, us as people uh, to help improve our condition. And, and therefore, there's always room for social sciences and humanities uh, to contribute uh, to, to that human aspect, that social aspect, which at times uh, uh, engineering innovations uh, tend to ov overlook. I think I'll stop there, Dr. Reddy. Thank, thank you very much, uh, Prof. Sambai. I'm sure there'll be other questions that would be on the chat and if you could respond to the relevant ones. If I could introduce our next speaker, Prof, uh, Professor Tenjiwa Mahiwa is the vice principal uh, responsible for research, postgraduate studies, innovation and commercialization, uh, commercialization and innovation at the University of South Africa. I know that Tenjiwa has a scratchy throat, but uh, she has taken the time to, to come to, uh, to make uh, her presentation. It's particularly um, pleasing for me to introduce Tenji Wei as I met her as a research director at the Human Sciences Research Council. And you know, the HSRC claims everyone as their own. And <laughs> in addition to, to this role as vice principal, uh, I don't think for, uh, Tenji Wei would forgive me if I didn't mention that her research interests are gender studies, self-study, dress and indigenous knowledge. So make what you want about how you locate uh, Tenjiwe. She is, uh, as I said, at UNISA, and UNISA is the largest university in South Africa with over 400,000 students and is well known for its distance education programs. Tenjiwe, over to you. Thanks a lot, um, uh, Vijay. Uh, it's good to actually reconnect. I'm sorry about my voice doesn't um, reflect how I feel. I've tried to sort it out, I'm just failing. I hope you can see me. I cannot tell from this end. I think this kind of technology is still needed to be um, upscaled to a point where the presenter is able to tell if people can see her, him. Can you see me? Uh, I, I can see you, Tenjiwa. I don't see anybody on the chat uh, saying that they can't. Uh, uh, okay. And, oh, and, 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 and the PowerPoint yeah. presentation that I've put up, put up, I hope you can see that as well. I can see the presentation, yes. Perfect. If um, anybody has a problem, please put it onto the chat and I can communicate to you. Okay. Yeah. I cannot see the chat um, comments right now because I've put it on PowerPoint, but I will be led by you as the moderator in terms of what you want me to respond to. Should there be any areas that need my response? I acknowledge um, all panelists and uh, our partners uh, from the um, NSI to the NRF, HSRC, my uh, recent past family, um, University of Venda, 
um, and colleagues that are probably not have um, um, acknowledged. Um, Sanbonan, Molen, Avshen, Da, Veda, good morning. I'm, I'm, I'm deciding this morning, afternoon actually it is now, um, to flight my response to the question of what's the significance of the week uh, with uh, this title, Innovation, Technology and Commercialization and a Science Week Imperative. Now, now for us, this is very important to Tunisia because just this morning earlier, I uh, opened, welcomed one of our showcases, um, that is a student showcase, which uh, since 2021, we actually having it happening in the same week as the science week, because we've realized the importance of this week and we wanting to align all other kinds of sciences to the hard sciences that this week had traditionally been known for. So I wanna actually look at that from the research and innovation point of view and somehow share uh, my interpretation of the week and its significance for UNISA. And this is the week indeed that's very important for us. We started this morning with a student showcase, believe it or not, that nine years ago was instituted by a national uh, student uh, representative council. So the SRCs do actually are, and often may, although we don't broadcast it, be interested in, in the sciences and the hard sciences for that matter. So for us, uh, it is a week where, where in we want to concentrate on research that matters, uh, the vibrancy, the dynamic research culture that's significant that we need to be having. And more importantly, as I said earlier, to involve uh, students, not just students who are within UNISA, because much as UNISA has been known traditionally, historically, as a, a university that services people who are in the labor market already, but more and more, we're seeing younger students who are in their um, early, who are in their teens, early 20s, uh, being students of UNISA because of the massification of the higher education um, and the need, and, and uh, as well as the, uh, the fact that students want to be involved. Included in there are uh, also involvement of uh, high school students, as well as students who are, we're now beginning to actually try to drill down a bit further to lower than a high school, high school meaning uh, grade 11 and 12 in terms of involving them in our research and um, activities, showcasing their work, involving them in this week and ensuring that they are part of it. And of course, this week as well, we, we for the first time launching the virtual e-conference, uh, which used to be a conference wherein we're reflecting um, on, on our research and innovation uh, activities at UNISA, but looking at how now in this week, for the first time, we having a maiden one where we're saying, how do we get all the sciences to collaborate, come together so that we find solutions, so that we have research that indeed does matter. And for us at UNISA, we, we believe and hold that that's the strong transformative agenda. We should be pushing and encourage new ways of knowing, new ways of uh, uh, tackling uh, uh, problems that we come up with innovative solutions. And we are, of course, uh, encouraged, also for me in this instance, uh, by Jeff Bowser's, um, the founder of Mozen, when he says, a quote, in today's era of volat volatility, there's no other way but to reinvent, invent and reinvent. The only sustainable advantage you can have over others is agility, that's it because nothing else is sustainable. And for us, this week becomes a week of- Sorry, Tenjibe, one, one second, one second, please, Tenjibe. Sorry, yes. there, there's a, on your screen, it has a little caption, it says live captions and subtitles, which is showing on our side. Uh, can you just click off that? So, yes, got it. It's cleared now, thanks. Okay, I don't know. I, I'll just to show, show all of you then, because from my end, it's not reading that, but what we 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 doing? Do you want to put it onto slideshow? Must I put, put it onto? Uh, okay, okay, go ahead. We can see. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, also, my my hearing um, ability is affected by this flu. 
Um, we, we also are, are looking at, as I said earlier, let's just go beyond the, the STM, um, um, SMTs, science, engineering, technology, maths, and all of that, because we, we're looking at, at participating uh, actively and check on how we, we could uh, interact. And of course, lessons that I learned from HSRC when I was a, um, an HSRC family member have had a role in my looking at uh, getting UNISA to look beyond just what we know about the, the hard sciences. So in this instance, then we're looking at, um, as my colleagues have said before, that uh, we, we, we cannot ignore the fact that we, we have to find ways of how we make the sciences respond to the socioeconomic development progress, and um, as uh, we've been called on by the 2019 and a, a, a white paper leading to the decadal plan that has come from the, from the NSI. So for us, we use this week as a, as a platform for students within UNISA, especially those that are full-time students. We have more full-time students than actually one who wanna believe, as well as students uh, who are our future students for coming to UNISA who are in the, in the high school uh, level, for instance, to understand you know, what major research and innovation initiative should we be thinking about and pursuing by looking at, just looking at what students were sharing this morning at their showpiece as we welcome them into this week's activities, was we had pushed them to say, what troubles you? Just look at what troubles you and how do you solve just the tiny areas that trouble you and be innovative and put in science uh, into that. So that we create not only solutions, but possible uh, entrepreneurial possibilities, uh, which may uh, respond to uh, the socioeconomic uh, development stagnation that we see, and ultimately the national development plan um, grand imperatives that we have not even begun to scrape uh, their, their surface. So for us, we look at the week as, a, as an additional platform to interact and be inspired, not only by the work that our students are doing, not only by the work that our scholars are doing, but also our partners are, are, are working on. Hence, for us, the establishment of partnerships for, for innovation, like what we're doing right now, is very, very significant. And it, it's something that we so much appreciate. We collaborate with the three, for instance, IDC, HSRC, you name them all. And we are looking at a gradually, but with brother COVID having ascended on us that has destabilized some of the activities that we had begun to have and we're, we're taking off. But we are looking at um, helping industry, industry helping us uh, to access their terrain, their terms and them access uh, academic research expertise and possibilities of finding solutions as well as skilling uh, their um, uh, labor. Uh, market, uh, 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 for instance, labor force that they have there. And, and also check on how we market even our own research, because a lot of work that at times we do, you find that it is not known because of um, our lack of, why is this empty? Because of a lack of um, ability to, to market, to be concentrated on just generate knowledge. But with all these partnerships, we learn the fact that new knowledge needs to ultimately, as this slide demonstrates, have an impact, and that that impact will be um, um, a path that has many stations, if you will, from the knowledge you generate to the uh, fundraising, you collaborate on to the IP uh, disclosures, protection to the uh, companies that exist that are possible grant companies to the startups that we need to be looking at in terms of how do we collaboratively during this week deliberate um, brainstorm as well as more importantly include our students uh, who are young and old in ensuring that we we achieve the impact that's necessary and the impact that changes lives and do so in a collaborative manner as my colleagues have said earlier on in terms of working together. And for us, I just want to zoom now into uh, some of the work that we're doing in us trying to practicalize this. And of course, because of the, um, um, the, the SMTs and the importance of, of, of the, the subject field of the high sciences, 
We're seeing more um, IP disclosures from that end. We're only beginning to see a few from the social sciences, but uh, just in the year of 2020, we had uh, about uh, more than 50 pieces of technology in terms of research and development activities that were disclosures of this is where we want to contribute uh, in terms of uh, how uh, we could bring about change through the research and innovation, but not only within um, the, the hard sciences, not only within the science engineering and technology, but technology, as I said, Ella, begins, has begun and actively uh, taking quite a huge uh, importance uh, in, in this activity uh, of the disclosures leading to uh, the hopefully commercialization. It is a, a path that's very, very a bumpy for us as a university, but it's a path that we engage with uh, quite intently. We're getting our students to have startups, we're funding those startups, we're actually getting to get, have them have workshops, as well as even our own teachers uh, in particular, because this, in, especially in this week, we, we've realized and appreciate the fact that uh, the teaching field is very important. Hence, uh, we look at the scholarship of teaching through online and distance uh, learning and how could we uh, make that scientific. And in that way, we, uh, from tomorrow, are rolling out workshops leading to a conference the day after and research awards on Friday, wherein we are acknowledging the fact that the world that we're in now is a different world and therefore we need to, to have these changes. And we are taking on the challenge that Brother COVID has put on us to actually work in these modalities towards achieving the goals that we want to achieve. So just in a nutshell, that's what Tunisia has interpreted this week, uh, in particular this year, and focused a number of activities, uh, which uh, ran since this morning until Friday evening, where we're looking at how we could have a better world. And we are saying nothing should go back to normal, because normal, we can all agree, wasn't working. If you go back there to the things that we have known, who will have lost the lesson that uh, Brother COVID brought upon us. May you arise and do better. And indeed, that is uh, my message from Lunisa and sending greetings from the Vice Principal, uh, from the Vice uh, Chancellor and Principal of the University, Professor Puleng Lingabula. Thank you, um, Program Director Vijay. Thank you very much, Prof Mahiwa. Uh, I'm going to throw a question that's on the chat to you. Uh, it's a bit of a provocative question, and I know that you will be provoked with the, you will also be provocative in your response. So Syed Omar says, uh, engineers are trained to innovate using science and mathematics to produce technologies. The engineers innovate on a daily basis. Oops, now I can't get this thing right here. Uh, on a daily basis, they are therefore ideally positioned to lead the conversation on innovation. Uh, is that something that you would agree on that uh, innovation is should be left to, to engineers or, and you are the vice principal regarding innovation, how do you see innovation in your institution further than uh, with the sort of physical technological innovation, but other forms of innovation as well. So perhaps a response from you on that. Thanks for, for that question, Vijay. It, it is actually a very important question indeed. Um, we, we cannot, we, we will have lost um, our belief, not only as a social scientist, but also as in particular, um, a manager to whom the college, one of the colleges referred to as the um, faculty elsewhere of science, engineering and technology, they report to me directly. We will be uh, missing the point if you only uh, pigeonhole the role of innovation to only be of uh, um, engineers and led by them. Having said that, uh, also we will be um, missing 
the point in only confining it to any other, for instance, um, scholar or innovators, hence my belief that innovation should be something that everybody actually gets involved in. If anything, innovation is not new. Just look at what you have done this morning as individuals. You very innovative. Circumstances being brought to you that you take for granted. You have your machine flooding in the morning, or you've lost your key, or your phone has died on you. Things that we could take for granted, but they push us to be innovative. In essence, my belief and standpoint is that every human being is possessing innovative skills. It's a question of how we harness those, enhance them, direct them, and be leaders in our individual spaces to innovate and ensure that we move from what we were yesterday to a better place today for a future that's improved, not only for the leaders, probably of innovation, but also the beneficiaries who are all of us in, in benefiting. Just to take a leaf from what we've recently done at UNISA, it has been recently, actually since COVID, ascended on us. Uh, we've made it compulsory for even administrators to find ways of being innovative. Not only COVID pushed us in that direction, but also the declining resources, because with the decline resources, you're forced to think differently outside of the box. And in that way, part of which calls for us to be collaborative, co-learning in doing so, so that the benefit is not only um, a glorified benefit for the manager, for the leader, for the, for the primary investigator, but a collaborated way. But and if, and if you really look at it, that's how reality on the ground on a daily basis is like. You speak before you even step your foot outside of your house. But even if you do, you find that you need other people to be able to have a fruitful day with a fruitful life. Thank you, uh, Prof Mahiva, and thank you particularly uh, in trying to give a presentation with your throat. I hope you feel better soon and uh, take care. Okay, thanks a lot. Our next presenter is Tandakazi Nkuma Moyo from the uh, Technology Innovation Agency, and she will be doing the presentation on behalf of, the, of TIA. Uh, Tandukazi is a published scientist and at the moment a business development manager and executive manager at the Technology Innovation Agency. And as you know, TIA is a national public entity that bridges the chasm between research and development and commercialization. So she will respond to the question of the significant as one of the stakeholder uh, in a as TIA is a stakeholder in the National System of Innovation, she will respond to the question of significance of the National Science Week. Sandra Kazi, over to you. Sure. Thank you so much. Uh, I would like to thank uh, the, the organizers of this session for inviting the Technology Innovation Agency to be part of this discussion and talk. And um, without wasting any further time, I think a lot of the speakers have spoken about the importance of innovation, why we should innovate and 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 um how far we are as a country in terms of innovation and i think uh really our role as the technology innovation agents i would really talk about the making it possible side if you also look at the the theme of the national science week it says making it possible through science and i think at the core of tia's mandate is really to support the state and uh, um, uh, in really making it possible that whatever or innovations uh, in South Africa 
uh, can be able to become usable products in the hands of users, whether locally or globally. So I really think the theme of the National Science Week really talks to the core of what we were established to do by the Technology Innovation Agency. And um, basically who we are as the, as the agency and our role in the national system of, inter of, of innovation we were established in, uh, by an act and uh, we, our shareholder, 100% shareholder is the state through, administratively through the Department of Science and Innovation. And really our role is to provide financial and non-financial support to innovation uh, um, uh, in, in the country. And, and the, the really what culminated into the state or government into establishing the Technology Innovation Agency talks to a lot of um, uh, the, the, the concerns or the, 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 the aspersions that were already casted uh, by the HSRC, the University of Venda, UNICE about the plethora of research and innovations that we have in the country. And we really talk about, when you talk about innovation, we're really talking about where you've got the, a, a, this new idea, but it has a specific use and a challenge and a market which it can be deployed to and it can be used for to benefit uh, a citizen whether in south africa or not and uh, and then what we what what happened and what happens in universities what we see quite a lot is excellent research work that takes place excellent um, innovation but you find that for it to get into the hands of a customer requires a significant amount of funding, but not just only funding, it requires a cushion and a suite of support of other non-financial support that includes expertise, engineering expertise, uh, biotech, uh, biotech expertise, scientific deep expertise, which some universities might not have in-house, which some innovators, the men on the street, might not have resources for. So what we then do as the agency is to provide that suite of support of saying you have your proof of principle as either a university or either as a young person or a woman or in any research capacity that you're sitting in and how then can we support you to cross what we have historically historically been calling the valley of death to uh, creating these products to get into the hands of the market and that and that's uh, that's making it uh, uh, possible now if you look at the um, the study, the Global Innovation Index report of 2020, which was a study carried out by the World Intellectual Property Organization, and without me being academic here, but just to put facts on the table, South Africa in in terms of input versus what we were ranked at in terms of our innovation capability. South Africa ranked number 16 over 131 countries, that includes Switzerland, I mean, your developed and developing countries. And that is number we're number 60 in the whole world. But in terms of sub, uh, 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 south, uh, southern Saharan Africa, we were uh, uh, ranked number two, that is just behind Mauritius and just before Kenya. And if you look at in terms of our input, so for any country to remain or to continue as what we call uh, in financial terms a going concern where you are able to sustain yourself as a country or we're able to continue to breathe as a country and to develop and to able to, to, to not go into liquidation, um, you have to have your inputs in terms of innovation quite solid. Now, when you look at the Global Innovation Index study, South Africa ranked number 40 in terms of input. That is how much we were investing in, in education, how much we were investing in research and development, which proved that we were not too bad. And when you look at the output of that to say, okay, if we've been investing uh, in education and research and development, that made us to be number 60 in the, in, in the world, which is not too bad either. So it basically says we have the raw material, we have the input, um, although every day we always say we need to increase it for us to be able to deal with the trade deficit uh, uh, at the same time. So, and, 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 and the basis we have to be able to keep as a going concern and really our role then as TIA is to really push over that edge and 
make these things to get to the market. So I just thought, let me put up this slide and really, again, uh, 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 try to talk to the question of our role and basically how the national system of, of innovation looks today. So when you, I think we've got a number of universities here. And when you look at, at the left side of, of my pictorial overview at the moment, you'll see that a chunk of what is required as input in the national system of innovation is a lot of funding from government. And you'll see a number of organizations that play different key roles in that in the innovation value chain. Then over and above that, you've got the R&D uh, 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 suppliers or the guys that really do the work to provide uh, uh, what we could work with. Then you've got a suite of support enterprise development, which is something that we do as well as tier through different types of support. Then we've got the private sector, which would require in this, it would have uh, been great for us to have at least one rep from the private sector, which will require the NSI to come up with the uh, larger amounts of money for us to 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 even go through um, and, and export, and and this is just to 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 put it out there to say these are the different role players that make up the NSI, but we still uh, sit within uh, the aspect of really supporting you from proof of principle to minimum viable product. And uh, just in terms of our programs, high level, I will really shoot through quite uh, fast on this one. In terms of what we what we do as, as TIA, we play a connector role, we play a facilitator role, we play an active funder role, and we play an enabler role. I've, I've already said we provide financial and non-financial support. So really on the non-financial support side, and I think there's a lot of questions that have been raised about engineers, we've got about... Uh, 18 to 19 engineering houses that sit in some of the universities and they really help any innovator, whether we funded them or not, they're able to go into those engineering houses. And in those engineering houses, we have what we call an affordability matrix, where we then look at you to say, can you afford to pay for the service that you want? We're talking about, about prototypes, we're talking about um, market samples. So you go in there with just your sketch of what you want to do, and then they provide those services. We also have the same model, but in the biotech space through what you call technology platforms, they do quite uh, 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 something similar. Then we've got our direct funding instruments. We've got a seed fund instrument. We work quite a lot with universities um, as implementing partners. Uh, uh, we work with CEDA. We work in, in, with incubators in terms of startups. And uh, our second line, that's our first line uh, of defense fund that we really use from proof of principle to a really a functional, first functional prototype. We've got a technology development fund, which is quite higher ticket sizes. And then we've got a commercialization support fund. But much uh, exciting um, in the latter uh, year, 2018-19, we launched a, a fund which really connects but also facilitates commercialization. And this fund is called the Industry Matching Fund. And this is where we've partnered with late stage funders like your IDCs, your public investment corporation. Uh, we're in discussions with the D DBSA. We're talking about the angel investors, the SME fund, the venture capital fund space, funding space, where we're saying with our de-risking financing money, how do we then, we marry uh, with the private sector money, making it much more cheaper and more accessible than you, so that you are able to then receive um, uh, accessible uh, follow-on funding towards commercialization. And interestingly, as this is Women's Math as well, one of our partners in that industry matching fund um, uh, uh, instrument that we, we established in 2018, is a fund dedicated to women called Desert Angels. We partnered with them where we exclusively fund women owned, uh, women founders or co-founded businesses. And I've already spoken uh, in terms of um, our service provider where we really support with them uh, uh, providing the infrastructure that is required to, uh, to really um, uh, uh, make these things happen. And I think I'll, I'll, I'll stop there for now and take any questions. Um, thank you. Thank you, colleagues. Thank you, Tandukazi. Uh, I don't see any questions regarding Tia in the uh, chat at the moment, but uh, perhaps I can just lead with one question. Uh, I assume much of the innovation that you've referred to are the, is the high tech innovation. 
Uh, is there any, are there any instruments to sort of support low tech innovations, which perhaps would support, could have some uh, commercialization uh, values as well, or certainly uh, it, it will contribute to development? Uh, so definitely, uh, we, we do have a grassroots innovation program, and thank you for raising that. Um, this is a program we are currently running on behalf of the um, Department of Science and Innovation. Uh, and this really looks at, it's a nimble solution that really looks at those innovators that are not within your university or your research council or your research institution or a, a well-established company. So these are really uh, the type of innovators, which some of them are really based in communities. They've got community-based um, uh, type of interventions. And really, when you look at them, the, the value there more than anything is the type of innovations that are there for social impact. Um, so they should still be some uniqueness, some value, but really that's where we have dedicated support towards solving those community-based challenges. And some of this could actually be even exported to other South Africa-like countries or like challenges in those communities over and above uh, South Africa to the African continent and even to Asia or any similar uh, uh, setup. So we do have a grassroots innovation program which has a fund within there, but it also provides non-financial support. And what we then do within this uh, a program and instrument as well, we do then support these innovators which have very high social impact uh, uh, value within them to, to really become uh, sort of like businesses that are able to be sustainable so that it is just not projects for a year and then the next year, but how do we try to monetize um, the, the, the cooperative type of strategy within uh, innovation? Thank you very much. I'm sure there will be other questions on, on the chat. Appreciate your input. Uh, Looks like a last minute that you were pulled in. Thank you very much for that, Sandukaz and Kumar Moya. Thanks. So I'm seeing uh, a, a question on the chat, and um, I think it's okay. Um, uh, it says, to what extent is the agile is the agile movement used in governance? of innovation. Maybe can we can we let that question slide for now? I would like to, maybe we can answer it after maybe Dr. Mbonene has spoken because I think in my, in his talk, he might, he might actually uh, respond to it. Okay, we will do that. Thank you very much for Thanks. Uh, uh, picking up the question as well. I couldn't see it. In. So the last speaker, Dr. Mbonene uh, Muefe is from the Department of Science and Innovation and the role of the Department of Science and Innovation is to boost socioeconomic development in South Africa through research and innovation. And so, uh, uh, thank you very much, Mbaneni, to uh, for for participating in this uh, panel. As the the views and the word of government is also very important in this conversation. Mbaneni himself is the Deputy Director General for technology innovation at the DSI, and his responsibilities include space uh, science, bioinnovation, and energy research. Uh, so uh, again, maybe it's the response of a government, it's not a response of government, uh, government has outlined the role for the NSW, but perhaps you could extend the significant uh, uh, share what you see or what government sees as the significance of the National Science Week. Over to you. Uh, thanks very much. I hope uh, you can see me, but most importantly that you can hear me. Um, you can see and hear you. Yeah, thank you. I'd like to firstly acknowledge the um, role of my fellow panelists in this discussion and also the university for, for hosting this very important session. And then my take on the importance of the science week will probably take a form of just looking at how things have developed globally. Firstly, in the sense that we have grown 
as the citizens of this world. Uh, and if I have to take a snapshot, for example, from 1960 to date, that we have grown, uh, 1960, the world population was about 3 billion. Uh, 1980, the world population was 4.5 billion. 2000, it was 6.1 billion. 2020, 7.8 billion. So we really are growing at an alarming rate as the world population. And this one thing that has not grown. And that is the actual space within which we live. So the earth has remained pretty much the size that it has always been. And it is important to therefore reflect on how is it that we continue to live in a world that is developing and growing at such an extent in terms of population, but actually doesn't grow in terms of the resources that it has. In many ways, because of the growth of the population, we also see that the resources begin to shrink and we need to continue to do more with less. And that really brings me to the importance of Science Week. And in my view, there are a couple of things that are quite critical for humanity. And a whole lot of them we don't pay attention to, and some we do. Um, for example, uh, we all know about the importance of money in the world. And while a whole lot of people want to have a lot of money, but very few people actually have a sense and understand how to deal and to handle money. Um, now, the second aspect is basically the issue of science. And while everything around us points to the role and the importance of science, we actually as a world or as a global community understand very little about science. And this is really for me where the science week comes in. And maybe the half truth we know about science week is that it is about raising awareness of science in various aspects of our life with a specific target on young people and the scholars. The other half that we really talk about is the importance of this week to the general populace. Because ultimately it is when science is understood and appreciated by the whole of our population, whether it is the old people in our villages, the young people, the learners, the students, the academics, the politicians, the religious leaders, the traditional leaders, all of us need to appreciate the role of science. And also uh, dealing perhaps to one of the questions that was directed towards Tenjiwe, I appreciate the fact that science and innovation are not only a platform that is operated on by scientists and engineers, but that there are so many undocumented scientists and engineers of the past and of our time who need to have their contribution to sciences acknowledged. And that, that is why when we engage on matters of science week, one of the areas that we don't leave behind in letting people appreciate its value is that of indigenous knowledge systems. Because that is where our science is actually founded globally. Whether you talk about modern health, whether you talk about modern food security, all of it is premised on us building up on the indigenous knowledge systems and how in the past we used to keep ourselves healthy and how in the past we used to make sure that we got food and how in the past we used to even practice farming. How you look back, for example, at Egypt and its pyramid and begin to appreciate the fact that that is actually science and engineering at its best. And that's really why it's important. For example, that we make sure that our young people, especially in the African continent, also appreciate that we've got scientists in this continent. They might not have been documented like we know of um, the, 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 the others uh, in the West, but that what they have actually done is actually science. So, so, so this role needs to actually be amplified. These days we're celebrating it at Science Week, but my view is that we need to do more than just looking and focusing on Science Week, but continue to raise awareness of what science, technology and innovation is about. 
So I have mentioned about the population that is growing 1962 to eight from about 3 billion to uh, 9 billion, almost. So basically uh, 8 billion. And the challenge is that population needs to be fed, it needs to be kept healthy, it needs shelter. And most importantly, what sometimes you tend to forget is that we are social beings, so we need to socialize. We need to visit friends, we need to talk, we need to communicate, we need to reach out to each other, we need to feel that we've been um, you know, considered to be important beings and that just build us as, 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 as humanity. And the role of science in doing that has actually been amplified over time. And, and what, what the science does uh, it is also quite important in the sense that before we know everything else, and, and, and there is a very interesting biblical scripture about this, that most or all of the things that we know, we actually know in parts, and that the detail get revealed as and when such information sometimes is availed. And science is one critical aspect of making sure that we avail new information and it enables us to, res to respond and to deal with challenges as they emerge. I'll give an example of how we're dealing with COVID. The first uh, couple of months after COVID outbreak, there were a whole lot of things that we were doing. And every single day we were getting new information scientifically about how to actually deal and handle this, this virus. And if you remember correctly, in the beginning we would have a case, say at a school, and the school is closed for two weeks. And before you know it, there's another case at a school, and when the school goes for two weeks, until scientific evidence says, hey, basically, if you've got a case, you just need to disinfect, and the next day people can be back at school. We all will see all these sort of uh, 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 disinfection tunnels that people were disinfecting the roads and everything, but new information emerges. And we begin to say, no, that's not how to do it, actually, because there's very little um, that can happen by you having walked on the surface that is probably uh, infected. Now, what I'm trying to say is that science is important because it always reminds us as a people that we need to continue to seek knowledge. And that search for knowledge must never stop. And it is what must inspire us to go and encourage young people to get educated and to learn and to also appreciate that while previously science was considered to be this hardcore engineering, mathematics and your physical sciences, today science is about how everything else actually converge into one purpose to solve a particular problem. And that is where again, I come into uh, the question that was raised to Professor Tenjiwe to say, you know, are we looking at the engineering? No, we're looking at everything, at how everything comes together. Because without the interface with social sciences, we have too often see a lot of useful technologies being rejected because the people who it was supposed to benefit were never made part of the process of coming up with those solutions. So as a result of that, as we continue this week to celebrate science, we need to know that the word science doesn't mean engineering. It doesn't mean chemistry. It doesn't mean physics. The word science simply means knowledge. And we need to go out and uncover it. How that knowledge also get into various aspects of our everyday socialization. And yes, the hardcore so-called sciences are very crucial in enabling us as society to be able to adopt some of these new uh, developments and making our life better. Today, we're talking to you here, we are supposed to be at the University of Venda. I'm sitting in Johannesburg, some colleagues are sitting in Pretoria and others are sitting in Toyando and everywhere. And this is ultimately the benefit of science. And it is quite crucial that when we talk about Science Week and raising awareness thereof, 
we also need to appreciate that ignorance is not a regional challenge, but it becomes a very huge global problem. And, and we can reflect this, for example, on how very many countries were responding to COVID outbreak. Uh, we would know last year, for example, there are a number of countries where in, um, as, as uh, the Vice Chancellor, uh, uh, Dr. Tamberini has indicated, people were touching telephone towers because they were linking 5G with COVID-19. And, and these are not necessarily countries that you can say they are the so-called um, developing countries or uh, um, you know, low and middle income countries. We had this phenomenon happening in the UK, where, for example, over 77 um, mobile towers were actually uh, touched. We saw that happening in Tennessee in the USA. And of course, we saw that happening in South Africa in, in KZN and probably many other places. And the point I'm trying to raise here is that when we talk about science awareness, we need to appreciate the fact that the role of Science Week is not just about how we want to, out of our goodness, reach out to the rural communities and those that are perhaps uh, uneducated, but it is about how you reach to everyone because scientific illiteracy is a huge global problem. It's another pandemic that is also affecting the so-called developed countries. So that is why even when we raise awareness of science, during this period, we need to have a very good focus even to urban areas, rural areas, settlement of whichever form, um, informal and formal. But ultimately, we therefore need to have to appreciate who are the players in this game. And I really appreciate the role, for example, that the likes of the HSRC play. You know, all the government agencies that are responsible for science and education. Every little aspect of our life where, for example, is governed by technology to a point that we don't even realize that technology is behind it. How you woke up, you wake up in the morning and you go to apply for an ID and the science that is behind everything that we need to begin to appreciate. So that tomorrow we don't raise a generation that is going to ban infrastructure that is critical to our, for our well being, simply because they don't appreciate the role of science, technology, and innovation. So without really going into a, a much deeper debate, I just thought I needed to take that angle to say that this week is about letting people, the whole society, rural, urban, young, old, appreciate science, technology, and innovation. And the one thing that is quite crucial it's how we appreciate the role that older people play in our communities. If you go back to rural villages where I come from, you find that a whole lot of children are being brought up by their grandparents. So they interface with this younger generation on a daily basis. And unless they have the appreciation of science to an extent that they can share and encourage these young ones to appreciate science, your, 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 your breadwinners, as they call themselves, which is the generation 35 to 49, will not be able to have that impact to the extent that the older people can because they sit with the kids. Some of them are the ones who are doing homework with the kids every day and they need to be able to say to the younger children, yes, you might be rural, you might be young, you might be black or you might be women, but science, technology and innovation are not excluded from what you need to learn. In fact, you are encouraged to do so. So I really want to wrap it at that. And I thank you, uh, VJ, for this role of trying to tame us all into speaking to time frames. Um, and when it came through, I just felt I'm intimidated at that stop. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, DDG. I think it's towards the end of this, I realized how to intervene to stop it. Thank you. It was uh, such an interesting presentation and appreciate you trying to bring the various aspects and, and your framing of the uh, population increases and knowledge increases uh, and, and, and knowledge not keeping in, um, not, not expanding at the same rate that the population is and therefore this kind of problems that are created. So 
it, it was a very interesting way of, of framing it and I appreciated the, uh, the, the way you set up the whole debate and, uh, and science literacy and the importance of it. I, I don't see any, and, and hopefully I can see all the questions on the chat, but I don't see any questions. And we are also running late uh, in that there is another presentation uh, going. Uh, it will take place at 13.35. So let me, uh, uh, before I hand over to Dr. Palesa Sekundani, who has been uh, responsible and leading the setting up of, uh, leading from the HSRC side, the setting up of this uh, <clears throat> theme of work, if I hand over to her, let me first uh, uh, express uh, the appreciation from the organizers of this theme and uh, to all uh, presenters, uh, it was very interesting to listen to the different takes and I'm sure that you required much more time to give us the full uh, uh, suite of, uh, of, of programs that you wanted to talk about, but you've wet our appetite and I think people can get onto the different websites to become more literate about the activities that are happening. I also would like to thank the participants. Uh, so in total, we are 64 at the moment uh, for staying the one and a half hours over lunchtime. And I hope you're having your lunch uh, while you uh, listen to this presentation. Uh, DDG, uh, I know that I, uh, Isaac Ramova, uh, who's responsible for the National Science Week at DSI may or may not be on the panel, but certainly this as the first way of looking of innovating and, and must really appreciate the NSW team from DSI and SASTA for having to be very innovative and creating this platform uh, of uh, uh, this platform for activities to, to, uh, to create a greater awareness of science and science engagement. Um, it bodes well for the rest of the week and I hope that others will join in the program, the very interesting and exciting and challenging programs that the organizers have put up. So from my side, thank you very much. And I'll hand over to Dr. Sekhajani to close the session. Good afternoon, colleagues. And, and to the fellow panelists, we would like to really thank you very much for um, attending the session. And we actually do invite you to um, have a look at the documentary that we shot, uh, that was uh, produced in collaboration with the community in Limpopo, funded by um, UNIDO, uh, various municipalities uh, of Limpopo, I mean, yeah, municipalities in Limpopo, and um, also co-produced with HSRC. So we do invite you to, uh, the, the link has been uh, dropped in the chat I see. So kindly do join us for that um, documentary. There will be uh, Dr. Tinaro from University of Venda who will introduce the, uh, the, the documentary um, that was shot there. So if you do have time, please, you're welcome to join that. Other than that, on behalf of the partners, which is Technology Innovation, um, Technology and Innovation Agency, University of South Africa, University of Venda. Um, we would really like to thank you very much uh, for partnering with us um, through the uh, National Science Week SASTA funded program. Of course, through uh, also that is funded by the D Department of Science and Innovation. So thank you very much for agreeing to be part of this exciting week as we put it together for the whole week. There will be a physical, um, contact session, which uh, will take place in few communities, about three municipalities in um, Limpopo. We will share those details, um, I'm sure, through the, throughout the course of the day. Uh, thank you very much. Have a lovely day, Feather. See you in the next session. <laughs>